Good day, I'm Stacey Ann Smith and this is your GIS News for Tuesday, October 6. Water restrictions in some drought-affected sections of the corporate area have been lifted following heavy rains over the weekend. The National Water Commission says its customers served by the Seaview and Hermitage Constant Spring Systems now have uninterrupted water supply. The NWC says the water storage level at the Hermitage Dam has moved from 69% to 100%. However, there's only been a marginal increase in the storage levels at the Hope and Mona systems, so nighttime restrictions still apply for the areas they serve. Those customers will now have water for 10 to 12 hours during the day. In the meantime, water restrictions remain in effect for sections of St. Thomas, Portland, St. Mary and St. Anne as those parishes received little rainfall. And even as the corporate area is experiencing an ease in restrictions, the NWC is still urging customers to conserve. Innovative startup businesses will soon have access to grant funding of up to $4 million through the Development Bank of Jamaica. Dubbed the Innovation Grant from New Ideas to Entrepreneurship or IGNITE project, it will support the growth and creation of innovative firms. If you're a startup, meaning you're operating for less than 24 months, and you have a truly innovative idea, a new product that has never been um, launched before and it has to be innovative because that, that's, where, that's where we believe um, that Jamaica can get its competitive advantage. DBJ executive Claudine Tracy was speaking Sunday on JIS TV's current affairs program Issues and Answers. Ms. Tracy said the grant program would operate through business service intermediaries like banks which will be responsible for the capacity building of the select entrepreneurs. The Ignite project will be launched on October 21. It will be conducted as a two-year pilot to investigate the effectiveness of grants to a select group of innovative startup enterprises. The Ministry of Agriculture is reaffirming its commitment to increasing border control to safeguard the island's poultry sector. Speaking against the background of the threat the avian influenza continues to pose to the poultry industry, State Minister Luther Buchanan said partnership was very important to protection. He said the ministry has been working closely with its private sector partners to protect our borders from avian influenza and other diseases. Every initiative that seeks to increase dialogue to identify actions that will facilitate the achievement of your vision of enabling a dynamic sustainable and competitive industry that supplies the total poultry products and livestock feeds needs of Caribbean people is one that we welcome as a government here in Jamaica. Minister Buchanan was speaking at the start of the second annual Caribbean Poultry Association Technical Symposium on Monday. Jamaicans visiting the Cayman Islands can now opt for a 10-year visitor visa. Previously, all visitors who needed a visa to enter the Cayman Islands could only get a single entry, multiple entries in one year, or for a three-year or five-year fixed period. The 10-year visitor visa only applies to Jamaican nationals. The island's chief officer in the Ministry of Home Affairs, Eric Bush, said the initiative was aimed at strengthening visitor travel to qualified Jamaicans without jeopardizing border control. The change in visitor visa rules does not affect the 30-day limit for most visitors visitors who do not own property in Cayman. It will also not affect requirements for any non-Caymanians, Jamaican or otherwise, to get work permits before they can be gainfully employed in the islands. Efforts to push the arts and maximize funding got a recent $25,000 boost from the United States Embassy in Kingston. The money will go towards this year's Rex Nettleford Arts Conference scheduled for next week. The check was handed over Monday by the U.S. Embassy's Councilor for Public Affairs, Joshua Polacek. That this investment will help Jamaica to plot the right path to making arts a vital contributor both to development and to the broader national project. And therefore, we see this not just as support for the arts, but as smart development. The third biannual conference is being held over four days from October 14 to 17 under the theme Growing the Arts, Breaking Boundaries. The Chase Fund also provided financial support for the Rex Nettleford Arts Conference, which is being staged by the Edna Manley College and the Institute of Jamaica. And finally, the Ministry of Education recently handed over 135 new metal detectors to schools at a cost of $2.5 million. They replaced old or non-functioning detectors and will be operated by the school's deans of discipline. I'm particularly concerned that no dangerous weapons of any sort are to find their way into our schools. And there is no issue of human rights that can apply when it comes to detecting such implements and preventing their transmission into the schools. And for that reason, the metal detector is of particular significance. And this is not a weapon. 
this is a, an instrument of protection. They were issued as the ministry relaunched its security and safety policy guidelines publication, which is a detailed document to be used by schools to ensure the safety and protection of students and staff. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Stacey Ann Smith. Thank you for watching.